What's up everybody? This is Zach with Veteran Construction. We're out here at a roof repair uh, in Crown Point and I want to show you guys a little bit about how I would go about this. Uh, it's the under, it's the overside of the valley, which makes it easy because we don't have to mess with the underside. That can get a little dicey, I'm sure as most of you know. But if you are new to this, and maybe you're a homeowner who found this video uh, looking to troubleshoot your roof, see what it takes to fix it on your own, uh, this isn't exactly one of those situations where I need to troubleshoot anything. There's just some blown off shingles, right? So I just basically got to replace them. It's pretty pretty clean cut and dry. If you do need to troubleshoot your roof, you probably just want to start with. Obviously, you know that there's a leak, so a yellow spot on the ceiling is going to be a leak that's already dried, right, from a couple days ago. Uh, a wet spot on the ceiling is a current leak. Sometimes it matters because you might you might think it's coming from right now, but you didn't notice it, and it, it can matter because driving rain and things of that nature, stuff I, we don't really need to get into, but for the most part, you're going to find a leak, and nine times out of ten, it's going to be a pipe or a chimney, something out uh, in the detail area, right? Because shingles aren't supposed to leak in the, in the, uh, out in the field, right? Unless you got something like this where they're putting nails near seams, that's a really tough leak to find. Um, but one of the best ways you can find it, if you're having trouble, if it's not as obvious as a pipe or a chimney or anything like that, go up in your attic, take a look around, you find wet insulation, uh, drop water droplets over on the underside of the plywood or on the rafters and things like that And that'll help you troubleshoot it to find out where it is from there You can follow these instructions once you know where it's at So I'm gonna take you guys down to the truck real quick, and I'm gonna show you what you need for a repair like this All right, so what I have here is uh, Some roofing cement and I put it on my Dashboard to get some to get warm so it'll come out of the tube better. It's pretty cold outside right now uh, So you're gonna have trouble if you don't do that Hey, you really hurt your hand trying to get this stuff out of there if it's not coming. So you need a caulk gun, uh, obviously, to go with that. You'll need a flat bar. The bigger the bend, the better. I don't have the one I uh, like to use for it, but this one will work just fine. Um, as, as far as hammers go, I use smaller hammers for repairs. And you're going to need a hook blade. All right. So this is used for cutting shingles, straight blades are uh, not ideal for cutting shingles however if you do not have a hook blade you can use a straight blade on the back of the shingles which brings me to my next point you're going to need shingles which we have in here somewhere back side of the yard. and those are ikos uh not a shingle i like to install and uh i mean this is just a repair it's what was put up there and this is also it's pretty sad what happened they've replaced this roof twice now and You'll see in the repair how terrible of an install they're, they're getting. So, I mean, it's insane, really. I mean, just look at that drip edge. Wow. Why put white on gray drip edge? Why do that? It's crazy. Okay. Let's get to it. I'm not sure how good you guys can hear me, but 
you can see the perfect match doesn't always match perfect because of weathering and things like that I don't use IKO all that often I took a shingle this is what they gave me it was between this uh, dual gray and charcoal gray but yeah it's plenty good you just don't want it leaking Let's take a second real quick to admire their nailing. All right. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer at home, I'm going to try to talk a little louder so you guys can hear me. If you're a do-it-yourselfer at home, these high nails aren't doing a whole lot of justice for the shingle. So I came through and I put these in. Uh, with the first time I came up here to get the shingle sample and everything uh, So you can see when a nail goes through this part of the shingle It's supposed to go through the back of another shingle so that this shingle below it has nails in the double thick part which only goes To right below this tar line, right? You can see right here Take this off right there like my nail is barely actually catching that so my nail probably could have been even just a little bit lower. You only got that much space uh, to get that nail in there, okay? And these guys went so high that they weren't even catching the shingle below it, and that's why these blow-offs are happening. All right, so as I come through, put these nails here, take note of where you should be nailing your shingles. Alright, these ones, this one's fine here. Give it one more. Up in this area. Alright. Okay. Now, I'm going to hope that this squirt's good. No. Come on. Don't be cold already. Alright. Need to do that to this shingle. Or to this thing here. I could have brought some ice and water shield. None of these other ones really matter. I could have brought some ice and water shield, but uh, felt paper still there and everything. So we're just gonna go ahead and hang this. And I'm gonna caulk these two nails also. That one and that one, because they're extremely close to the seam. I don't like that. I hate it, as a matter of fact. See how I'm leaving space for that shingle? The seam's gonna be here. Leave space. Go on a nail roughly six inches away. Okay. It's probably time for the flat bar already. You want to gently separate that. I'm probably hitting a nail in there somewhere. There it is. This is why I said more bend is better. You see, see how that is? I don't got much bend. So. Be careful not to poke through the shingle above. Oops. Oh, there's all the nails in there anyway. That was a bad habit of mine.
here's what I meant by the short nails, right? I'll be able to get it here a lot easier with a short nail. If it's on a thick part like that, sometimes you can set it and it won't hurt the shingle. Oops. Any more than my fingers just did. Gotta be real careful because these brittle or these you gotta be real careful because these shingles are definitely more brittle in the cold like Floyd Mayweather's hands get up in this side, kind of do what we did earlier. See how the shingle has a break in it? Means we should probably take that one up. Oh, look at all those need nailed. Bad. I really wish I had my Ben one. having to use two hands. I've never had to do this with this because I always get the right flat bar. Should be clear. If not, they'll let me know.
Watch, they're going uphill in that little bit. <laughs> they got a weird seam right here. They don't know how to do their stair steps, and that probably screwed me over one of these. No, it's okay. But yeah, so now I gotta watch for a seam here, about right there, because they don't know what they're doing. So I'll put two close ones over here. Very important, the seams. Sometimes it's just a cap nail or something. Or it could have been a nail I was missing. But it ain't really hurt nothing over there. See again, no nails. See what's easier, the shorter or the bigger. gonna be a shiner because <laughs> this dang high run they got it's all right I'd rather it be correct and sealed than hidden and bad. So I'll show you what we can do for that to kind of hide it a little bit here. With valleys, you don't want to nail close to that the valley center. Not within probably eight inches, six inches, whatever. Depends who you're talking to and where you're at.
Should have made sure those were included. That way, I wasn't throwing anything light that can get caught in the wind. These I know are fine. Right. Now, should just reseal these up. Do them a favor. Oh, I still need a nail. You need need to make sure you don't forget to nail these other ones it's real it's real easy to do right because I didn't lift any of these up right like that'll I could have just fixed everything I just fixed and forgot to do that and had some serious problems you know to short nails unless I got more in here. Start paying attention to where these are so I know where to put these dang nails. It was a super long one. Okay, so we're all done here. We've got all these shingles secured. These are already warm from the sun. All right. Okay, they're no longer like they were. We're gonna go ahead and seal them up now. I had to change caulk guns and all this. So we don't uh, need to seal the ones here. These shingles have tar on the bottom of them. So those will seal. So you see how much is coming out there. It's a good little amount. Okay, so that's on. Anywhere you broke a seal, you need to come back through and put it down, right? I didn't break these, didn't break that. This one I broke. Okay. can't hurt to cover some nails sometimes and stuff too and then I'll put a dab on this nail try to keep it on the high side okay and then I'm gonna come back through with a piece of shingle and just put it right over it sometimes you'll get that in repairs 
especially if you're doing it by yourself. I really don't like that I have any shiners here, let alone a few of them. But these shingles are really brittle. You can't, I can't get them to flex like I want. One thing I wanted to do, which is For example, this one little shiner. Okay. This little tar spill off, it's not the end of the world. I mean, most people ain't looking at roofs that closely anyway. And on top of that, every shingle I've ever really have used, like, you see, this is a tar spill of mine. That You see that all the time on roofs in brand new shingles. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna step on these a little to help them squish down into that stuff. These guys left a lot of garbage up here. Grab that for them. These nails and stuff, they'll, they'll roll out and uh, roll out of the downspout. Let me get this ratchet strap off here. It's not really doing a whole lot. Roll off the, uh, roll down into the downspouts, go off into the grass sometimes, and make its way outwards and pop tires and lawn mowers. All right, thanks everybody for watching. If you have any suggestions, put them down below. Anything to add, put it down below. Questions, whatever, just leave it in the comments. And then if you'd like, there's probably a video over here or here, and there's definitely a sub button right there. Hit that sub button to see more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the bell. Thank you.